Okay, this is an edge for me, just acknowledging that. Most of you know me as a Tantric yoga teacher. It's what I've been doing for, I started teaching in 2006, started teaching yoga way back then, started teaching Tantra yoga specifically in about 2018, etc., etc., righty ra, blah, blah. However, I have moved to Canada and I've been letting go of things, I've been feeling into things, and I am going to start today, this is day one, a 40-day creativity challenge. So every single day, I'm going to show up on Instagram with some kind of creative offering. It could be a poem, it could be a dance, it could just be, I don't know, I don't know, this thing like I'm, I'm stepping into the unknown, and I'm doing this standing, right, because uh, dance has been a huge aspect of my life and I have learned how to fully surrender and allow and let go into the dance. Words have been a big aspect of my life. I have been a writer since like I was seven years old and I've written books and speeches and screenplays and poems and all of these things. And so one of the things I'm really curious about now, I'm stepping into some spoken word stuff. It's like what happens if I start to combine the body with the words and see what comes out. So this is the beginning of that. My commitment is to show up every single day, no matter what. And it might be something I created a month ago or a year ago, but I'm going to post it. Or it might be something I'm creating on the fly right here, right now. Watch in the world, wake up from history. And it means I'm going to lean into my edges. So it's going to be a little bit scary. So that's the first thing. Day one, 40 days. Let's go. Second thing is I just want to give a huge, huge, heartfelt shout out to Enlightened Festival. Um, you have my heart. You have my heart. And it was the first time I went to Enlightened Festival. It was the fourth year of the festival. It was germinated and created here in Squamish, where I live, and it's run by this core crew of incredible human beings. I'm not going to name any of them because I can't name them all, and one of the things I absolutely loved about Enliven was the cohesiveness of the crew, the interconnectedness, and the way that I saw them really embodying what it is they're bringing through, and I took off my um, armband this morning and I put it on my altar and this is the armband. It's very dirty because there was so much dust, right, in a Canadian summer. So there's three things. The kaupapa of this uh, festival is embodiment, hello, all about that, community, <laughs> yes please, and co-creation. So I just feel like stepping into an live and festival you know, my second festival here in Canada since I moved here, I felt so at home, like right from the get-go. The thing about the festival scene, particularly the conscious festival scene, which doesn't have a huge amount of intoxicants at all, right, is that it has a certain energetic vibration. So when I go in and I'm seeing the vendors and I'm seeing the crew and I'm seeing the volunteers, and I'm seeing them set up, I'm like, I recognize this, I feel the souls, I feel the energies, and what is happening here is similar but different to what is happening in New Zealand, right? So let me just see if I can give you a few snippets from, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I mean, just, oh. it was so beautifully held. There was so much devotional, integrity in the whole thing and what I loved so much was you know gone to a lot of festivals in New Zealand been a part of a lot of festivals in New Zealand and I'd have these things I'm like oh, I really wish that we could do this I really wish we could do that this should be happening that should be happening and the beautiful thing about being at an enlightenment festival those things are happening for example um, the electronic stages would end at like midnight and then they would go into some voice or some drums. So they'd start to take it down a notch. The nervous system would have a chance to integrate what the electronic had like woo, brought up. And then they would offer sound healings, sound journeys. And just everyone lying down, getting cozy, 
and really integrating into the nervous system all of the things that had been, you know, activated throughout the day. And that was such a beautiful thing. And I've been desiring that and I got to experience it. So that was just like a gift. Uh, one of the other gifts that I really noticed was that every single stage had an MC. Right? Vern was the MC on the main stage. And I think Will, possibly, forgive me if I'm getting the names wrong. Um, and those MCs, oh my God, they really just showed the acknowledgement and the appreciation and they just like big up. So really witnessed and saw the people that were performing beforehand, like they'd wit before they came on and then after they'd finished. And there was a sense of continuity and it really helped to hold the space of the stages and honor the artists honor the musicians, honor the sound weavers and magicians, right, that came up. And I absolutely adored and loved that. Um, what else? I mean, there was so much I love. Those things really, really stood out. Um, the facilitation, the facilitation. I don't often go to workshops at a festival. I don't really feel drawn. This time, I felt drawn. And I went to Conscious Kink, hello. Um, that definitely played my edges and fully appreciated how it was held. Saw some ways it could be held a little better, you know, like there's always room for improvement. Um, got so much out of it, met my edges, had a bunch of shit come up, you know. And then I went to this Throat Chakra Healing. Oh, I forget the guy's name, Nad Guruji can't remember offhand, I'll put it in the notes. Um, and that, so he has studied with masters in India, he's from India, and he's done that really deep lineage practice of the kind where you start, so he's learning classical Indian uh, ragas and all the things. And so he started when he was a boy, and it's like, right, you will hum for four or five hours a day, that's your first thing. And you will do that for a month before you learn anything else. And the thing about that kind of practice as a way of going into creativity is that it really grounds it because you're working with the energetic body and you're clearing out all things so that the voice can come through with so much more clarity. And so that workshop, oh my God, it just touched some really deep stuff. <laughs> I didn't see that. Uh, and just ended up, yeah, ended up solving my way through that one. And I worked with, we had to work in partners and I worked with this really beautiful woman who just, you know, there's no words between us. And here I am just sobbing and sobbing and snot. And I'm like, where's my tissue? There's no tissues. And it's just dust and snot and tears and all the things. Um, and it was beautiful and it was amazing. Amazing. So then went back to the campsite, which is right in the forest. We camped right in the forest. And there was a stream beside our forest, beside our camp spot, which was so beautiful. So I could go back and just like, bathe in the water she could say so you know wash my hands and wash my face and wash my feet and be like okay ready to go back in um so then i went to the sacred polarity i always get clear of all that stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and i'm aware that in some ways it's wisdom because i need to move my way slowly into this stuff because there's still you know and then sometimes it's avoidant. So at this particular festival, so I was like, right, I'm going to do the things that I am resistant to or a little bit like me. So I went, I did it. And again, I sat on the edges <laughs> and I noticed that I didn't want to go in and do the exercises. And I'm like, okay, fucking go in and do the exercises. So I went in and just stuff came up straight away, like straight away. And I was able to voice it. I think Amy was the woman I was paired with and I was able to voice it with her because we're meant to be doing this thing. I'm like, fucking can't do that. I'll tell you what's fucking coming up for me. This is what's fucking coming up for me. <laughs> it was just nice to do that. And then I couldn't do the next part of the exercise, which was, so the women all worked together and then the men all worked together. And then we were meant to come together and work with each other. And I was just like, no. Um, so I went and sat on the edges again because I was so, there was so much stuff coming up. I just sat there and just tears and tears and tears. And one of the beautiful things about having done 
so many festivals and so much inner work is that I feel 100% comfortable about being in a public space at a workshop and just absolutely dissolving in tears whilst holding myself in it simultaneously. And um, that was strong, that was deep. And oh my God, I can't remember the name of those facilitators either, um, Warrior Sage, I will, again, I'll take them down below. Um, but they are a powerful couple doing powerful work. And I just felt, oh my God, I just feel so, they were also at the Heart of Tantra Festival and just feel so much like gratitude that they are doing this kind of work in the world and just the integrity that they move from. So freaking beautiful. So I feel like I went into the festival with a clear intention. I worked with intention as I moved around the space, uh, came home, had a big long bath to integrate, integrating, integrating. And I know how I want to step forward and move in the world right now. And that is 40 days of fucking creativity. Let's go. Um, and what else do I want to say? Oh, one last shout out to Kalila and Ashley. So this is the first time in nine years ago in festivals, and I've probably been to 40 or 50 festivals, that I traveled with in the same car with women, sisters, set up camp with them, and then traveled home with them. And that was a journey. That was a journey. And it was beautiful, and it was expansive, and there were edges, and felt so grateful. And all of us were kind of take charge kind of women, which I loved, because it meant that I got to, like, not take charge. <laughs> Ashley was taking charge. And then Kalila would take charge. And then occasionally I would take charge, but we got to share the taking charge bit. And I love that. That was awesome. Um, campsites and beautiful men. We were surrounded by men, right? Which was, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. It was all just like fucking beautiful. So I feel like I've talked for a long time. You may not even watch all of this, which doesn't fucking matter because I ain't doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. Um, stay tuned for 40 days of creativity and see what comes up. Uh, is there anything else I want to say? Let me feel into this. Clearing the channel, right? Clearing the channel is so fucking powerful. Showing up every single day, no matter what, will reveal the stuff that's in the way. I'm curious and excited to see where this is going to go. So stick around every day, 40 days, and a call out. Maybe some of you are feeling that kind of creative urge. Maybe some of you want to step into your creativity as well. Maybe some of you want to do your own kind of challenge, whatever that looks like, and then however you show up on, I mean, it might not even be Instagram. It might just be showing up and doing 40 days of your own creative work. So that is my invitation. That is my challenge. See you tomorrow.